We're not at the dog days of August just yet, but it is Bark in the Park here at Nationals Park as we get set for game two of this three-game series. The Phils and the Washington Nationals. The Phils find themselves in second place in the National League East, two and a half games behind the Atlanta Braves. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with John Kruk. We'll hear from Greg Murphy in just a little bit. A couple of lineup notes. Michael Franco is back in the lineup, so we'll talk about some of the adjustments that he has made over the last couple of days. And now we get a chance to talk about Adubel Herrera. I mean, you talk about adjustments, not totally sure what he's done, but he's turned himself back into the player we saw the first six weeks of the season. Yeah, and, and not only that, Tom, but he's adding the power stroke to his game, and that's something that, you know, when he was at his hottest, he was still not hitting a lot of home runs, but the last five days have just been unbelievably fun to watch because every home run he's hit has been a big home run. It's not like a 15 to nothing hit one, no, no doubter. And, and go and live with that one. But these are all home runs that either put us in the lead or tied the game up. And it's just been a special thing to watch his power stroke. And you notice every pitch is middle in and he's getting that foot down. He's getting to him quick. This one here was an absolute tracer that hit the facade of the second deck, that auxiliary scoreboard. And then this one last night against Tanner Roark, a spinner that didn't do a whole lot. You saw Roark try to lean back like, is that going to go foul? <laughs> no, that's a souvenir, my friend. But look, look, what he, look, look what he's done and look what he's attempting to do. Try to hit six in a row, six games, six straight games with a home run to break the Phillies record. You're talking about guys Dick Allen, Mike Schmidt, Greg Lozinski. I mean, prolific home run hitters and now we have Odubel right there at the doorstep. Well as you mentioned too he's on the doorstep of uh, shattering his own personal best in home runs and we're not even at the all star break. So the Phils are going to try to make it two in a row against the Nationals. It'll be Aaron Nola on the mound for the Phils 16th start. Eric Fetty will be making his fourth appearance of the year for the Nationals. Lineups at first pitch when we get back. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, America's best internet provider, according to speedtest.net. By Toyota, the Toyota Camry, Highlander, and RAV4 have something for everybody. Toyota, let's go places. By Citizens Bank, official bank of the Phils. Visit citizensbank.com. And by Independence Blue Cross, live fearless. Learn more at ibx.com. It's a hot day. Blue skies, which is a good thing because everybody said there'd be a lot of rain in the area today. Maybe there will be later on. But the Phil's looking for, uh, to win game number two of this three game series. Later on when we win. That's right. It can rain all at once. Yeah, let the rain help the celebration. Eric Fenny is all warmed up and ready to go. And the first pitch of the day from the 25 year old is a fastball in there, and we're underway at its 0 1. 
Cesar was three for five last night. He's hit in seven consecutive games. So we got a bit of the breaking ball. His uh, cutter slash slider is one of his best pitches. I looked it there. So hard for a left hander to lay off that pitch. Up it in. Here's the scatter report on Fetty. He's got a good arm though. Yeah, he does. And some similarities the way he pre releases the ball or after he releases the ball, little Matt Scherz are like. Which if you're gonna emulate anyone, you emulate emulate one of the best. Two balls and two strikes to Cesar. Cesar's walked 49 times. There's Scherzer watching on. Scherzer and uh, Fetty have built up a pretty nice relationship. The Nationals have asked Scherzer to be sort of a mentor to the former first round pick. Fetty has. So we get a miss. Got him with a fastball, one away here in the first. And with one out, that brings Reese Hoskins to the plate. Let's take a look at the rest of the Phillies lineup brought to you by Xfinity the fastest internet service according to speedtest.net. Well the top five or top four is the same as we always say but now number five is becoming the same. It's Nick Williams then Scott Kingry Michael Franco back in the lineup today and then Jorge Alfaro hits eighth and Nola bats ninth. Hoskins swings at the first pitch and fouls it. It's 0 and 1. It's going to be interesting to keep an eye on Mikel. He looked like in batting practice he was working on a leg kick. Don't know if that's going to show up in the game. Sometimes you work on it in practice for, you know, BP for a few days, and then you start feeling comfortable. You think, well, let me try this in a game. So we don't know if he's going to try it today. Yeah, they've been working on his hands too. We'll kind of show you that as we go along, as well, and where his hands are. One ball and one strike to Hoskins. Phillies have scored a first inning run in five consecutive games. Try to do it for six straight games. Last time they did it in six consecutive games was back in 2011. Uh. One and two. There's the cutter. So Dubal waits on deck. He's been a big, uh, big reason why they've scored first inning runs recently. Hoskins with 13 RBIs in the month of June. And he takes low two and two. Reese was one for four last night. He scored a couple runs. He walked a couple times. Yeah, one through five, four, four or five yesterday was just fantastic. Cesar on base, Reese on base, Odubel, four hits. Santana drove in. 120 runs. <laughs> Beautiful day. Yeah, top four hitters last night, 11 runs, six RBIs, 10 hits. They haven't had many of them lately, have they? No. Just, uh, you know, nice by the six, six inning, you can relax and, you know, take a breather and say, all right, this is, this is the way baseball should be played. 10 run, 10 run lead. Three balls and two strikes to Hoskins. And he hits it the other way, foul. Nationals took Fetty out of UNLV. He was a first round pick in 2014. He was Bryce Harper's high school teammate. In fact, uh, his college coach, Fetty's college coach, was Harper's old college coach. So, pretty good Las Vegas connection. In fact, the Nationals did tell Harper before they drafted him that they were going to take him uh, number one, and it was sort of a, a chance that they took because he had had Tommy John surgery the year leading up to the draft, so they didn't know how healthy he was going to be. Well, you can tell he has a great arm, and he has some great movement, and looks like he has a pretty good idea of what he wants to do out there. Brown ball left side. Rendon's got it, and he flips over to first in time. Two outs. That brings Odubel Herrera to the plate. He provides us with our Nissan upgrade, upgrade to the technology of tomorrow today. 
And the last 10 days, O'Double hitting 472. And that spans eight games. He and Rendon are on that list. Jesus Aguilar, how about what he did last night? Broke up a no hitter to tie up the game against the Cardinals and then won it for the Brewers in the bottom of the ninth inning with a home run. You know what the Brewers are they're like the Braves you know a lot sneaking up on people but really good teams. And, and the first home run was impressive because Flaherty had a no hitter at the time it was a breaking ball and he pulled it second home run was the opposite field into the second deck I mean it was a shot. Inside one ball one strike to O'Double. Hey you really. On the outside wow. corner one and two. Oduble four for five in last night's ball game. Got a change up two and two. Boy, this cat works quickly. Oh, nothing wrong with that. Some of his starts the, so far in his big league career, he started against the Dodgers, the Cubs, and the Yankees twice. Up the first base line, and Murphy has it and he steps on the bag. And the inning is over. So the Phil's stretch of scoring a run in consecutive games comes to a close in the first. We'll go on to the bottom of the first inning. Thing. They'd like to unleash the Natitude because the Natitude's offense has not been great so far, at least over the last couple weeks. Let's take a look at their lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest internet provider, according to speedtest.net. They start at a meeting, and that means they move Bryce Harper over to center field. Anthony Rendon hits third, then Soto fourth. Daniel Murphy bats fifth. Turner drops to the number six spot. And they will face right hander Aaron Nola. Nola, eight and two on the year, with an earned run average of 2.55. He's among the league leaders in ERA, in strikeouts, in innings pitched. The opposition hitting just 208 against Aaron Nola. Yeah, I think he's established himself as that ace of our staff. And, in, you know, in this day and age when everyone's lighting up a radar gun, you know, Aaron will every once in a while he'll get one up there, 94, 95, but he stays around 90, 90 to 92. But movement and location. And change of speeds. He would have been a Atlanta Braves Leo Mazzoni dream come true. Absolutely. Work, work quick, throw strikes, change speeds. Easy. They had a rough outing last time against yeah. the Brewers, so he's trying to fine tune some things today. Tell you what, the Brewers can hit. Yeah, they were patient too. I went two to Eaton. Dave Martinez. When he met with the uh, members of the Washington media today, he said, We need some length out of our starting pitcher. Let's 
Swing and a miss. Three pitches, and Nola has his first strikeout. So one out here in the first. Yeah, that'll bring Bryce Harper to the plate. Well, you know, when you have a guy that's around the strike zone like Aaron, he can throw strikes with all his pitches. You know, every once in a while you just chase. And, you know, you see a fastball, and you're like, oh, I got to attack that one. But look at that ball just right up and out of the strike zone, and Eaton can't catch up, can't catch up to it. He's nowhere near that pitch. Yes, missed it by a <laughs> foot. Well, now Bryce Harper. Harper was one for three with a double yesterday. He bunts oh. back to the mound. Well, that's what you wanted. One three on the put out. You know the only bunt hit he has this year is a drag bunt. Every other bunt he's tried to the third base side has not resulted in any kind of a base hit. I mean that you know this is what Gabe Kapler intended it to be. You know pull the big shift on if he wants to bunt let him bunt. And you know what that did right there Tom. I would almost guarantee he doesn't try to bunt again today or tomorrow because he made an out doing it. He might not. But they've accomplished a couple things. I mean, they've had a bunt twice. Here's Anthony Rendon. You know, with his numbers against Aaron, he has great numbers against Aaron. And, you know, to, to do something that you're not comfortable doing, right. and you haven't been very adept at doing, you know, it, it shows you that there's things going on in his head right now that uh, every hitter gets and every hitter tries to get rid of as quick as possible. I think that's the part that I mean you're right on with. I mean you knew that because you were a 300 hitter but every hitter goes through. Ah. Yep. Without question. I remember once in double I mean I was so hot I was I, I couldn't make an out. Even if I tried I could and I had a runner on third the infield way back and I thought well you know let me try to trick him here and bunt and I bunted a one hopper back the pitcher runner on third doesn't advance I get thrown out and my manager aired me out. Mm. There's a slow roll up the third base line Rendon is going to beat it out for an infield hit. Well there was nothing that Michael Franco could do. So an infield single and that brings Soto to the plate. Well, you talk about placement, placement, placement. That's uh, couldn't ask for more from Rendon right there. Well, you got to deal with this cat. He he can swing. Yeah, he's hit it seven straight. His hit last night was a double right down the right field, right down the left field line. Cesar's in shallow right field. That ball's lined toward the alley in left center field. O'Double's not going to get it. It's a one hop over the wall. Oh, caught a break. And what a break that is for the Phillies because it stops Rendon at third. It's a double for Soto. We told you he had power to all fields. Now the Nationals have runners on second and third with two men down. Wow, what a break that was. Rendon was about 10 feet from the third base bag. Yeah, and you know, I, I've said this all along. You know, it, it, it's up to the discretion of the umpire, even on a ground rule double, from what I'm told. Now, now, common sense would tell you, with two outs, Rendon's running on the on on the swing, and he would have scored easily. So at some point, don't you think the umpires might say, well, you know? Certain situations, we're going to allow this run to score. Well, the first and then time you're going to ask for arguments, right? All right. Daniel Murphy is eight for twenty lifetime against Aaron. And I remember I was watching a game and, and Billy Hamilton was on, and someone hit a ball and he was on first, and he was stealing with two outs. The guy hit it, and he was at third base before the ball hit the ground, and. Ball bounces over the fence. He has to go back to third. Like he, he not. And I asked some umpires about it, and they said, "Well, it's easier just to put everyone back." Right. You know, cause it it saves arguments because you know that's what's going to happen. So. Opposite way, 0 and 2. Well, 
it, it may one day get to that point where they'll rely on even replay to help their cause with that. Yeah, like there's a ball down the line and a fan reaches over at the discretion of the umpire. Would he have scored? Mm -hmm. And they, I, I have seen them award home to guys like that, but never on a ground rule double. One two pitch. Down low, two and two. I remember in the postseason, remember in the postseason between the Mets and the Cubs, with Terry Collins, I mean, he was emphatic uh, with Ted Barrett, the home plate umpire, asking for the Mets to get a run on a ground rule double. Two balls and two strikes to Daniel Murphy. Here at the bottom of the first, and the Nationals have two in scoring position. Outside three and two. Trey Turner hits next. And here's where Aaron doesn't have to give in. I know Murphy's just coming off the DL and he, he hasn't been swinging it too good, but yeah, he's still he's Daniel Murphy. He's still one of the better hitters in the National League. You don't have to throw him a fastball here. And a change up back toward the middle, a base hit it to center field. One run is in, here comes Soto, and he's going to wind up scoring. And it's a two run single for Murphy, and the Nats take a 2 0 lead. I think I expected curveball in that spot. Yeah, it's just not a well located change up. Like you said, it's, you know, you're talking about one of the best hitters in this league, and it. There you see it to change up. They wanted it away. If he wants to reach for it. You know, he hits it off the end of the bat. It's a tapper back to, to Aaron. If if he stays middle in, he can hit it off the barrel and get it past him, and that's what happened. So two runs are in for the Nats and Trey Turner, who is seven for 17 on this homestand. He'll be the hitter. Her ball check swing. One ball, no strikes. But a decent year that includes 20 stolen bases, which is second on the team. Michael Taylor leads the way for the Nats. Another curve. One and two. Well, two ain't nothing to our offense. No, not the way it's going recently. Boys are just getting warmed up. Get to see Fetty once and second time through, different story. I hope <laughs> on the inside corner strike three call second strikeout for Nola Nationals do get a couple runs on the two run single by Murphy we will go to the second it's Washington two and the Phillies nothing.
head home for three games 705 all three games beginning Monday night. Go to Phillies.com to purchase your tickets. Oh, look at that thing. Johnny a little bark in the park today. Yeah, but what's that? Uh, Nationals. Nationals color. Mohawk. Yeah. Dog hawk. What's it called? Uh oh, we got some advanced scouting going on. Yeah, got to be well, a dog they're, hawk. They're trying to uh, trying to figure out the riddle that is the Philadelphia Phillies. It's a dog hawk. Carlos Santana leads things off and he takes fastball and it's 0 and 1. Got to keep your dog hydrated today. That's why I look like walking up the steps with a sham wow. Sham I love the sham wow. Santana <laughs> <laughs> takes low, one ball, one strike. Carlos was two for four with four ribbies last night. And a bit outside, two and one. But a top four last night scored 10 of the 12 runs. Is that uh, 11? 11. Wow. Yeah. With a floater down the left field line. And Soto, boy, he took a, an odd route after that baseball. And then finally looked down to see where the, the half wall was. Nothing to it. Yeah, he, he, uh, like that thing drifted back on him a little bit. You see him there, like, like he was running straight over. He looked for the half wall, like you said, and then the ball got on him quicker than he thought. Kind of handcuffed him. All right, so now Nick Williams. Williams, he had three RBIs last night. No balls in one strike. Swinging a foul, and it's 0 and 2. What did that hit him? I think it hit him in the foot, his back foot again. It was funny, we were talking to FP, I was talking to FP Santangelo yesterday, and he said, Have you ever seen more hitters foul balls off their, not only their back leg, yeah. the back, the back side of their back leg? And that just hit him right above the knee on the back of his leg. Like that, you know, you know you want to get, let it get deep, but. Man, there's deep, and there's like, I'm in there to stay deep. <laughs> Outside, two and two. Two balls and two strikes to Williams. Outside again, three and two. Fans groaned a little bit, but that was pretty far off the plate. Out toward left field again. Soto comes wandering in. And there are two outs. And that'll bring Scott Kingry up. Kingry last night was one for five. He's right around the plate yeah, with a lot of his is. pitches. He is, and that's uh, you know that that's when at some point you're going to have to start getting aggressive early. Oh and two. That was a curveball. That's the pitch that he probably uses. I don't want to say the least, but that the changeup or the bottom two. Got a fastball down low. One and two.
since the 14th of June the Phillies offense is hitting 290 with 32 extra base hits. That's not a bad run. The slugging percentage because of that is at 517 and it's I mean it's so noticeable you know, that they're they're hitting the ball they're barreling the ball more yeah. and more. And not only that but they you know the confidence to know that you're never out of a game. You know, your starter gives up two or three early you know the way they're swinging it that this this game is far from over. Ground ball shortstop Turner charges a jump throw not in time. I don't know if he needed to do the jump, but he always does. Yeah. And that, and you know, that's. I mean, I don't understand it. I, I would think that if he ran through it and stayed on the ground, he'd get the ball a lot quicker to first base. But I mean, watch him here. I mean, you know, here's the thing. Scotty was leaning over, so he's getting a good jump toward first. But why Turner decided to catch and basically jump straight up in the air to throw and. You, know, you just run through the ba run through the ball and throw it off balance or throw it you know on the run while you're still under control and on the ground. Well that's a, you know, that that would give him probably the second or second and a half that he yeah. needed to throw him out. Well I'm sure Scotty ain't complaining. No. Hey this is the way their inning started right. Yeah with two outs. Infield single. Then a double. Then a base hit. Here's Mike Kell. See if he's leg kicking. Yeah. Leg kicking, and, and the other thing that Pedro Guerrero said that they've really been trying to get him to do, and uh, hats off to Carlos Santana, who's been talking to him off, you know, outside the cage, saying, "Hey, you've got to buy into this." Is where his hands are is to have them lower, so he's not starting as high. One and one. You know, we watched him do it in the cage. Yeah. And everything was through the middle, but you know, you get into a game, it's going to take a little time. Yeah, absolutely is. And it takes time, and it takes, and and look, if it doesn't work the first two or three at bats, I know how I was. I would abandon it, just because it couldn't work. If I didn't get a hit my first two at bats, that new thing they're teaching me can't work. Mm -hmm. Patience wasn't my strong suit, Tommy. <laughs> Breaking ball, and it's what it's doing. And here's the thing: you can talk about leg kick, you can talk about lower your hand, but if you're not swinging at pitches in the strike zone, it doesn't matter. And you know, you saw right there, he gets one and one. He throws a breaking ball down and away in the dirt, and that's been Mikel's Achilles' heel for the last few years: is chasing that pitch down and away. One ball and two strikes. And a line drive there you go. It to left field. Now see it works. Now yeah. he's bought in. Well that's the cutter. That's beautiful though. <laughs> All it took was one line drive single to left field. Yeah. I'm sure he thought after that last swing all right this don't work and then he you know catches one off the end a little bit but it's still a line drive the other way. And but he stayed in. He stayed in. He didn't bail and roll over. And well, Matt Gelb from the Athletic, we were talking the other day about you know, Franco and, and the sliders or cutters in this case. And it's amazing how the league obviously scouts extremely well after all these years. And at this point, he's going to get, if he gets five pitches, four are going to be yep. sliders and cutters. Yep. Now, Faro hits one back toward the middle of base hit. Kingry's around third. He's going to score. Bronco puts the brakes on smartly and the fills are on the board and it's now a 2 1 ball game. Yeah there you go two out lightning. I like it too. Jorge's been struggling a little bit offensively and you know he gets that first pitch from Fetty and let's just turn it loose and see what happens a hard hit grounder up the middle. He stayed on that ball good he, no overswing and. And we talked about it, his home runs he hits are not over swings and they go great distance and if he can curtail that and not try to hit it you know hit it over the fence but don't try to hit it out of the ballpark you're going to be a lot more successful. Noah takes high. But a nice answer back by the Phils. Absolutely. Aaron is only one for twenty eight. He's due. 
He's doing a big way, and they're playing him shallow and right. Yeah, McCall better get a good secondary lead if he's going to score. Outside again, two and zero. Oh. Yeah, pitching around. Him. That's right. They know he's due. They're playing the percentages. Uh, yeah, they are. Let's see. He's never been one for 29 in his <laughs> career, so he's due. Had the red light on. He must have had the no swing take. That's when he would just turn it loose on. Maybe tell him to keep taking. I think he's going to get a base hit. Two balls, one strike. Opposite way, and it is a base <laughs> hit into right field. They're going to send Franco. Eaton's throw to the plate is. It's not a way. Time. He slid off the tag. Keyboom got pulled to the right. Aggressive third base coaching by Dusty Wappen, and the Phillies tie it up at two. He was due. He was overdue. Aaron Nola, player of the game so far. And Derek Luke was coming out to talk to his pitcher. You know, the throw arrived before, long yeah. before Franco, yes. but it was off to the right. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is what good hitters do. You take a pitch out over the plate, you know, you slap it the other way. You know, Aaron's not a big power guy, but yeah, the throw from Eden took Kiboom up the line, like you said, and you know, give Franco a lot of credit. Good slide there. I think if they're, you don't want to nitpick anything here, but Alfaro should be on third base. Yes, he should. Uh, you know, you know, there's going to be a play with the speed of McCall. Look at him, <laughs> Valentin and Luis there. Making sure he's okay. Yeah, I have to be. I'm to be honest with John. I was surprised when I looked up yeah. and Alfaro was still standing yeah. on, on second base. But I will tell you this. I I've done it before. Where you you become a spectator, like you round second, you're watching a play at home. You're like, oh darn. Guess where I should have been. So we get a miss by Hernandez, and it's 0-1. But what it does is it takes the hold away now. You know, if he's on third, not that they're going to hold Aaron on, but Murphy would have to be playing a lot closer. And that would limit his range. But a base hit in the gap and never, you know, that'll solve all these problems. And he saw, I don't want to say that Murphy has limited range, but he saw what limited range he has yeah. on the ball that Nola hit. Maybe there's a chance if if he was there in that spot, yeah. he might have been able to get to it. Might have been able to get to it. Check swing, slow roller right side. Defoe is up with it, and he throws to first, and it's just in time to get Cesar. And the inning is over. The Phillies tie it up with two runs. Aaron Nola had one of those RBIs.
The park is gone. Don't miss the movie event of the summer. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom in theaters now. Well, the Phillies got a couple runs. Yeah, they're half of the second. Now we go to the bottom of the second inning. And Aaron Ola's just finished up his warm up tosses. When you have an RBI single and you're on the base paths, you get as much time as you need once you get back out on the mounds. And now for Aaron, it's to, you know, time to. Well, we thought they like, got, got some word that there might be some uh, delay of some sort because. No one came out of the dugout. Yeah, nobody did. Everybody was still sitting there waiting for Aaron and, to actually come and, out. And, and poor Cesar, you know, he makes the last out, so he has to stand out there and wait for someone to bring his glove. <laughs> yeah, he was standing there for a little <laughs> while. <laughs> well, a reminder that the Nationals are coming to Philadelphia next week. It'll be the first time they're coming to the yard. It begins Thursday, the 28th at 7:05. Don't forget the 29th and 30th are the Xfinity fireworks shows, and then Sunday, July 1st, uh, the Community Energy Solar Powered Liberty Bell. It's free to children 14 and under. Get your tickets now by going to Phillies.com. Weather's well, supposed to be really good this week, but the Yankees are in town, and then it should carry over for the weekend. Looking forward to, well, let's finish this one out first, but looking forward to seeing the Phillies against the Yankees. Mm -hmm. There's some more Yankee scouts trying to, everywhere. Well, I think they're scouts, they're advanced guys. Trying to figure out this riddle that is the Philadelphia Phillies. How can we stop the juggernaut? <laughs> the juggernaut's pretty good though too. They're okay. Wilmer Defoe will leave things off. And he takes a breaking ball on the outside corner 0 and 1. Nola entered today's game fifth in the National League in earned run average 10th overall. Tied for eighth in the National League in strikeouts. Tied for third in wins. And also second in slugging percentage allowed, which is a really big number. The Phillies are really harping on with a lot of their pitchers, and I think it's it's the smart thing to do. Just limit extra base yep. hits. Well, and he's the perfect guy. He keeps the ball down. His breaking ball, his change up, his fastball, all with movement. Going down, which is makes it tough to elevate. Breaking ball, and it's one and two to Defoe. Now he's adding, uh, you know, an offensive force <laughs> to his arsenal. Can't pitch around Jorge now. Well, it's nice that they that he was able to get that hit. This would have been a shame to waste another runner in scoring position. Line drive, base hit to right center field. Defoe runs well, but he'll hold up. Oh, now it's bobbled. He's going to. Yeah, he started and stopped. Well, that's why. That's why you don't take for granted. I know they're big leaguers, and they're not supposed to miss routine grounders in the outfield, but they do at times. And you know, Defoe started slowing it up, shutting it down. Nick bobbles it. No chance. Now if he was out there by the time the ball got to Nick he's he's going to make it into second because his momentum was going and and this outfield grass is notoriously the way it's cut the ball does snake snakes. Here's Spencer key boom. He was 0 for 1 last night. And here's what happened with a young player who. Probably realizes man if I was running hard the whole way I could have been on second base. He might try to steal early. To make up for it. And hopefully the howitzer is ready to go. Loaded, ready. Now Faro has thrown out 30% of the runners who have tried to steal this year. It's a heck of a name for a catcher, isn't it? Key boom. Key boom. Had a pretty nice career at Clemson, where the Nationals took him in the fifth round. He's become basically as a pro 
a defensive minded catcher throwing out 34 percent of the runners that have tried to steal throughout his minor league career. Got a lot going on as far as the stance goes. This is pace has really picked up, hasn't yeah, it? He's pretty slow getting in and out of the box. Better goes. Pitch is a breaking ball. Throw to second base is high. Goes into center field. Defoe did not react immediately. So a stolen base is fifth of the year. And the Nats have a runner in scoring position. I think Jorge had a really good grip on that. He tried to rush it. Defoe got, like you said, he got a really good jump and a big jump. I don't think Jorge had that ball. Had a really good grip on that ball and it kind of just sailed on him. Kind of thought that he would run early. Side three and zero. Oh. He's missed pretty far on all three of these pitches. I think he's winded from running bases already. Dude. Yeah, I don't think so. Mechanical flaw. <laughs> Fix it now. This is kind of the way he looked at times with the, in the Brewers game. He's always told me he loves the warm, muggy days, mm -hmm. and I think this is a warm, muggy day, wouldn't you think? Yes, sir. Outside ball four. And I have Fetty coming up. He's probably going to try to sacrifice. Summers are made for doing things outdoors, so remember you can always take your fills on the go. Download the NBC Sports app on all your devices so you can watch the games when the family when the family room TV just isn't an option. Alfaro laying down the signs. Fetty is 0 for 3 with three strikeouts in this season. Can always pop this up. And he bunts it right back to the mound. What a play. Oh, picked up by what a play. For one oh, over to first, man. not in time. Ooh, baby. That's that was a play. Was so quick. You see barehand that thing? That is a beautiful play by Carlos. When he let it go back past him almost to barehand it. Yeah. I thought it was going to go to Nola. That's what I thought too, but Phillies are taking a look at it just to make sure that they didn't get two. Now watch Santana. I mean, it's a, it's a hard bunt by Fetty, but look at Santana oh. coming in. I think Nola, Aaron thought he he was going to field that ball and just go to first base, but I mean, just look at his actions. His actions were basically to field it and turn to first. Carlos makes an excellent play. So one out, and here's Adam Eaton. There's a strike of the knees, 0-1. And, and, that, and that takes speed off the bases. Now mm -hmm. watch this. Watch how they crash. And look where Carlos is. And now he has to run over toward Aaron. Aaron thought he was going to get it, but the bare hand and the perfect throw, and then another perfect throw from Franco to Cesar, but it gives Fetty credit. He was running down that line pretty good, but what a play to take. Now you take speed off the base pass in, in Defoe. Yeah, because Kiboom obviously doesn't run all that well, and you got the pitcher think. first who did move pretty good up the line. He did, but this is a good thing. He's going to be out there for a little bit. Oh, 
Uh, foul off the glove of Alfaro. As he just barely got a piece of it. That's going to hurt a little bit. Look at hitting. Well, the ball went off the, the pinky part of the catcher's mitt, that rounded part. Oh. Breaking ball, swung on it, missed, and Eaton strikes out for the second time. Three strikeouts for Nola. Yeah, that brings Bryce Harper up. Yeah, there's the bread and butter for Aaron Nola, that big breaking ball. Backdoored that one on Adam Eaton. Great pitch with two strikes. I think Bryce is going to be bunting here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he's going to take that out of, out of his arsenal. Fastball lined the center field. Oduba started in, stumbles, and still makes the catch. <laughs> oh, man. That is vintage Oduba Herrera relying on his athleticism right at the end. To wrap up this second inning. <laughs> well, we can laugh at it now. Yeah. Because he's not hurt. He made the play. We go to the third. It's a 2 2 ball game. Phillies.com, go to the fan section and fill out the information, submit your answer on the subject line. The question is, John and Kyle, who is the only player to lead both the National and American Leagues in runs scored in a single season? So he, he led both leagues in the same year in runs yeah. scored? Trace, let me see that one more time. That doesn't sound impossible. Who is the only player to lead both the National League and American League and run scored in a season, in a season? Oh, so it's the same, the same guy season. Yes. who did it in both the National and the American League. Yeah. Because that would be one heck of a year. That would he, be a heck of a year. He spent half the season with one team. And you have to think the guy wasn't a good guy if he's leading the league and run scored and you trade him. <laughs> Bad teammate. Oh, man. All right, so we go to the third. Reese Hoskins leads it off. How about Oduble? I mean, we just ran the Philly of the week yesterday and the day before, and he's on there making all these catches and falling all over the place. I mean, Harper swings at a lot of first pitches, and he hit that one right on the nose. And Oduble misread it, got his spikes caught, but still was able to catch the ball. Athleticism at its finest. Doesn't always have to be graceful, it just has to be athletic. Oh. Hoskins grounded out to third his first time up. Inside, one and one. It's 
So right at the red both leagues. Mm -hmm. Trying to think back to the Expo days. Phillies. Two one pitch to Hoskins outside three and one. At ball four. So Hoskins draws a walk. Time now for our Geico quote of the day, and it comes from Odubel Herrera. And Odubel talking about his consecutive games with home runs and the hot streak overall. All I'm thinking about is helping the team win. It's always satisfying to beat great teams like the Nats. That's what you play for. Everyone here is a competitor. You always want to see where you're at. It's a good challenge for us. Luckily for me, I'm hitting the ball well. I saw that last night. I thought that was a really good quote, particularly, yeah. you know, balancing his strength and his confidence, but also, you know, talking about how good the Nationals are. Bats with a rudder at first, and he whacks that one foul, and it's 0 1. And, well, Murph, the, the Phillies have certainly needed his offense to kind of complement Hoskins and Santana during this stretch run. Yeah, certainly they play better baseball when Odubel Herrera is a big part of the offense, and he has been over the last uh, two weeks, and they've been playing better baseball. And, you know, it's always cool when you look at these streaks and you start to, you know, dig into the numbers and try to find out, uh, you know, some of the specialness about the streak. So five home runs in a row. And so you think to yourself, okay, well, what's he doing? Is he is he just waiting for a fastball and he's jumping fastballs and he's hitting them out of the park? Well, in this particular case, that is absolutely not the case. Take a look at what he has done. The pitcher who threw the pitch in the last five games, the Five home runs and the pitches. Fastball, changeup, curveball, slider, and then a changeup again from Roark last night. So five home runs on four different types of pitches is what Odubel Herrera has been able to do. So you can't get anything by him right now. He is that red hot, guys. You hope it continues. 13 RBIs in the month of June. He and Hoskins both. The balls are two strikes to Odubel. And that one's lofted into shallow right field. Eaton comes in. Defoe is out. Well, last night, Oduba provided us with our Toyota turning point. Yeah, we said in the open, you know, the five home runs in a row, they, they've either caught us up or put us ahead or both. And, you know, that's been the thing. It hadn't been like blowout, hit a homer, no big deal type of, type of thing. But you know, Oduba was our... Toyota turning point of the game last night. Hopefully at some point he can do it again tonight. Here is Carlos. Carlos. He flied out to left his first time to the plate. How about Carlos since the first of May 10 home runs 34 runs batted in. This is after an April where he hit just 153. In June. He's hitting 267 with 12 RBIs. His 54 walks are third. Change up, one and one. Got to admit, this is why I was surprised that the Nationals didn't add somebody to their bullpen today because this young man's already at 56 pitches with one out in the third inning. Well, we didn't see Kelly, we didn't see Herrera, we didn't see Ryan, Matson, we didn't see, well, we did see Miller and Doolittle are the only ones we didn't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we thought about maybe they would use Geo, but he threw a bullpen session today. That one's pulled to second base. Defoe to second for one. And then Rendon to first. And Murphy's off the bag. So there are two outs. So it'll go 4 5 at second base. And the fielder's choice. 
And Carlos is looks like he may have hurt himself. Oh, he hit that ball right on the screws to Defoe and you know, Rendon just got underneath that ball and had some tail on it. I think apparently the replay equipment ain't working. Dave Martinez is out there talking to the home plate umpire. Larry Van Over and saying, you know, we, we can't challenge if we can't see it, so we need to get this fixed. And they're gonna go. Yeah, they're gonna have to take a look at it. So Dave Rackley and Larry Vanover will come take a peek at it. Now Gabe Kapler coming out. Larry's going to talk to Gabe. Hard to tell. I mean, he's off right there, obviously, but was he on when the ball went into his glove? Yeah, I think I, if I'm the Phillies, I'm a little more concerned with hopefully Carlos is all right. I actually think his foot looked like it was on the back. I think there. so, too. Interesting thing is that Murphy didn't really say too much after the call was made. Larry Vanover is the crew chief and when there's a decision made by the folks in New York Larry will be the one that will signal at least to the left. Yeah the fans here are looking at it and they're all clapping but I don't know what they're clapping about because. So the ball's in the glove there yeah. I can't tell whether his foot's on the back. Yeah or not. that's what I mean is there enough to overturn it. That's this this might be clear like right there the ball's in the glove but is the foot yeah. has it already left the bag. I don't know if there's going to be enough to overturn it. Unless they have some way of blowing it up. Here we go. He's out. Oh, wow. Four, five, three, double play. No runs, no hits, and nobody left. We'll go to the bottom of the third. It's a 2 2 game. Can you do that, John? Uh, no. Was there a day you could do no. it? No. 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 Gosh, no. That. No. 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 Just not no. even. Not even after a night out with the boys. <laughs> could that have ever happened? I mean, I'm sure I flopped around like that before, but I wouldn't call it a dance move. Might explain some of those. Those creaks in your bones. Possibly. <laughs> Here's Red Doan. He reached out infield, hit his first time up. And he hits that one in the air to left field. Luis Hoskins says he's got it. And he does. One pitch, one away here in the third. 
That helps. Sure does. And Juan Soto, who doubled his last time, will stand in. Soto is now seven for 18 on this homestand. Mentioned that the Nationals signed him for 1.5 million dollars, which at this point you could probably term a bargain <laughs> if you project what he's going to accomplish. He's 19 years old. He's got a lot of advice from Bryce Harper, who also was a teenager when he made his major league debut. Uh. This young man was in Single A last year. But they knew, they knew that there was a really good chance he was going to be up here at this at some point this year. Pop up foul territory, third base side. Franco is there. Two outs. And Daniel Murphy's coming up. What a quick at bat, too. Boy, Garen's getting back on track with pitches. They might throw the last time with yeah. two strikes. But you can't fault them for throwing the changeup no. because his changeup has become so good. Because you mentioned he just missed his spot with Yeah, it. that's all. And you know, he Murphy could easily got out in front of that and hit a rollover grounder to save him. But you know, we mentioned his struggles offensively. But he's too good a hitter to stay that way for long. Fly ball. Nice inning. Shallow left center. Kingry is there. And that is a quick inning for Aaron Nolan. Nothing across for the Nationals. Six consecutive hitters retired by Aaron. We'll go to the fourth. It's a 2 2 game. A photo or video with hashtag hats off for heroes for each post T-Mobile will donate one dollar to support veterans. All right on to the fourth inning the Phillies and the Nats tied up at two. It'll be Nick Williams Scott Kingery and Michael Franco. Against Eric Fetty. Phillies with two runs on four hits. The Nationals with two runs on four hits. And Williams swings at the first pitch and fouls it. And it's 0 and 1. Did you guys count how many foul balls went down the left field line in that day game a minute ago? 
Yeah, we'd have had some action, I think. Yes, I think you would have. But you nothing would've. like whipping in there. Just, nice. just nice routine grounder. Yeah. That's that, all we were asking for. Yeah, that, you know, probably, you know, Murphy even could have made those plays. <laughs> Murph and I locked in another podcast today. What did you talk about today? Little League? Yeah, Little League and you know all the pressures that are on young kids and you know the travel ball playing way too much baseball over a calendar year. It's encouraging kids to play other sports, which they should. Well it's fouled off the net. And off the hands of Paul Fournier in the Phillies dugout. Humbug. I think you're right on with that, and I think uh, you know, I think more and more people are saying that. Get it back to the way it was. We played more than one sport. Yeah, Andrea Tomey sent out a thing yesterday at uh, the little video, about a five-minute video of Jim and Joe Girardi talking about. Coaching their kids and that is yeah, a fair Nick. ball down the right field line. You want to Get see past somebody it. run? Get Watch him run. It. He plays it off the wall and Williams puts the brakes on. He just didn't have a smooth flow as no. he, was, he was running hard, but he didn't have a smooth flow going around the first base bag. No, but you know, leading off the inning, better safe than sorry. No question. Seven doubles now for Williams. Tell you what, though, he's getting playing time and he's producing. Well, he can run. Yes, he can. Right there, he had a little yeah. issue. I wonder if that hurts his nose to run. But they said that, you know, what Bryce hit his double yesterday, you know, he flips his helmet off. And they said the reason why he does it because he said that he's wearing a flap now, you know, that protective flap like Nick has on right there. And they said when he runs, it bobs and it hits him in the nose or hits him in the eye. So he has to flip it off while he's running. Wow. What if he gets well, a helmet we that fits better? But we saw, well, we saw Andrew Knapp's home run. Yeah. The helmet was down in his eyes. And Just because of the weight of it, the extra weight of yeah, it. Yeah, I guess. I just see Nick at, at sec, you know, after he hit the double, he took his helmet off. And, you know, and then in between that pitch when Scotty had the bunt and went foul, Nick had to run a third, and he comes back and he takes his helmet off. I just wonder if that thing's hitting his nose. Inside, and it's one and one. He took it off again out there at second base, and he, I just wonder if that, hitting that broken nose. And, I think, tough, need, tough think, kid, I think he needs air. Think he needs air. He's a tough kid, though. I don't. I ain't gonna leave a game for it. I can guarantee you that. Just below the knees, two and one. I think he's he wanted these last two pitches. Rocco waits on deck. He's got a a base hit today. Two and two to King Rizzi fouls it off to the right side. Well, you gotta love it. You know, Scotty tried to get him over the bunt, and then right there he tries to hit one the other way. You know, Double did it last night. Ground ball gets Hoskins over to third, and ended up scoring a couple runs after that. Situational hitting. Scoring runs without is big. Yeah, sometimes it could be a lost art. Yeah, you know this, and I understand to a certain point about you know we don't want to just give up outs, but you know, and then there's other times where you know, getting that guy to third base with less than two outs is a big thing. Swing and a miss. Figure he strikes out. That is the second strikeout for Fetty. And Mike Del Franco's coming up. He's caught his breath by now, Murph. 
Yeah, he probably has caught his breath by now, but let's check in on the wheels that are Michael Franco. This is the run that tied up the game, the base hit by Aaron Nola. Check out StatCast. He scored in 7.42 seconds, second to home. If you check in on the average, 8.09 is the league average. Now, Michael Franco not exactly known for his speed, but he was picking them up and putting them down on that play. The secondary lead of 18 feet certainly gave Dusty Watson the option to try and score him. So all in all, a real good base running play by Mikel Franco there to tie up this game. It's amazing. I mean, Dusty has been really aggressive uh, this year as the third base coach. He's all, but he's also been very smart. And uh, you know, yesterday he had some great holds. Uh, you know, he got aggressive early in that game on, on Soto out in left field. And then today, you know, make you know, make eat and throw you out. Yeah, Dusty has said that with all the research that that they have and he has, you know, he looks at where an outfielder is when he fields a ball, and that helps him decide where when he's going to send somebody. Get through. Bouncing ball toward the middle, kicked off the glove of Defoe, and Williams will hold up it. Look third. at McCow. Look Michael at McCow. Franco going to second, and he is ah. at second base. Oh man, he thought he could win the foot race against Murphy. And he just couldn't do it. I know he did win the foot race. He just couldn't hold on to the bag with the head first slide. Man. He's a really smart base run and he sees it. No one's at second. Turner and Defoe are out there looking for the ball and Murphy comes in late. And you see him, he's safe and then he just can't oh, yeah. can't hold the bag. He got him on the foot. Four three on the put out at second base, an intentional walk to Alfaro. What? what? <laughs> to face the hot hitting Aaron Nola? I have to say, I'm a little surprised that they didn't send Williams. I mean, we talked about Dusty and how aggressive he's been. I was a little surprised they didn't yeah. send him there. Well, you know, where Dusty was situated, because there's a ball hit up the middle, he has to come down the line so Nick can pick him up. Mm -hmm. And so if he has to hold him late, he's, Nick can see him good. He might not have been able to see the ball because Defoe dove for it, but Turner was there too. I don't know if he saw the ball go past Defoe. Maybe he was. Maybe he was. He blocked out. Or he's respecting Turner's uh, arm too. Oh yeah, that was a shame. He went right off the bag. I mean, technically that should be a double, right? Because he <laughs> established second base. Side corner 0 and 2. Technically, yes, but by rule, it's considered I don't get out at second base. Yeah. But but if you steal a base and you you get the stolen base, mm -hmm. if you go off the base, no. well, you know, how, how does that what, base what kind of moronic rule is that? <laughs> you you you're safe. You came off the base, you're out. All right, let's research. All right, but let me ask you this. All right, let's say let's say it plays over. Macau's safe at second. Right. He takes his lead. They pick him off. Does he still get a double? Well, at that point, yes. Well, this is the most dumb dang thing I've ever heard. What kind of what person makes these stupid rules? Now here goes the commissioner thing again. Write it down. Write it down as part of your amendment my, to the commission. My rule changes as an official score. <laughs> that should be a double. I'm all for it. <laughs> he was safe at second. He came off the base. He's out. So look at this. Nola strikes now, out. Now I'm done. Well, the Phillies threatened in the inning. They did not score. They lead two. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. We're tied up at two.
Ford car, truck, and SUV crossover at buyfordnow.com today. And buy WB Basin. Who bought WB Basin? Fast free delivery. Nobody does it better. It's 70s day here at Nationals Park, so they were doing the YMCA. The presidents were doing the YMCA, but then Thomas Jefferson decided to leave his spot early. And he won the president's race because of it. That's, all, that's almost as moronic as the dang play at second. <laughs> Look at the people I don't play. That. I didn't even notice them by now. Dex are. Look, they got all tie dye, the headband. Oh, yeah. They want to go back to the 70s. Larry Anderson there to the left. Nope. <laughs> Trying to figure out what Larry was going to do today. Uh, I would say a recliner and a bottle of wine are probably part of the picture. I would think that's a pretty good picture for him. He can wax poetic with that picture, can he? Yeah. I haven't gotten any text from him. I'm sure, that could change. All right, so here is Trey Turner who has struck out. It is only at bat. Bottom of the fourth inning, tied at two. Nationals scored two in their half of the first. Philly scored two in the top of the second. 0 and 1. Back to back curveballs. No balls and two strikes. Through a six pitch third inning. And now is ahead 0 2 here. Another curveball. Three straight curves, and he picks up a strikeout. That's number four. And they'll be at bat as your number one Philadelphia Phillies app. Customize your experience to catch every moment this season. Get the Phillies home screen icon and features such as the MLB.TV game of the day, pitch tracking, in game highlights, live radio broadcasts, stats, news, and more. Download MLB at bat today. One away for Defoe. Defoe singled his first time up. And the dark clouds that were over an inning or so ago have kind of broken up a little bit. Let's finish this, baby. Yep. And after today, we can make our own friends for tomorrow. <laughs> Fastball in there, 0 and 1. Oh. Good spot. Threw a change up that was just off the outer edge. We need to get Aaron a little, little calm down. He's a little too edgy out there. Even when they scored the two runs, he was just Heart, like that. Hard beat doesn't change. Pitch number 46 for Nola. He has four swinging strikes and 15 called strikes. Oh, breaking ball down and in, I think. Ooh, two seamer. Here comes right, uh, Reese Hoskins out and left. Two outs. Revamp your office with the click of a button. Get an amazing deal on WB Mason's Super Seat Big Shot Chair. With just one click, you'll have your chair assembled and delivered right to your desk. Free of charge. Visit WBMason.com to order yours today while supplies last. Nobody does it better than who? But WB Mason. Spencer Keyboom walked his first time up on five pitches. Oh. 
to see Fetty lead off the next inning. Get Keyboom out. The pitcher to start the next inning. Maybe make Dave Martinez make a decision. There's some stirring down there in the old bullpen. Over to third, Franco, big hop. Nice and easy throw. 5 3 put out. Another fast inning for Aaron Nola. Through six pitches in the third inning. Not too many more here in the fourth. We'll go to the fifth inning. We're tied up at two, the Phils and the Nets. Fair play, the state of youth sports in America. So before they were major leaguers, players like this young man were simply kids being kids, playing all sorts of sports. So I ask you guys, who is that? Take a look. Can you tell? That was a tough one. Left-handed hitter. Yeah. That at Morgan. Adam Morgan. You think so? You think so? Huh. Well, who else do we have as a left handed hitter? Yeah, I think you're probably right about that. Cesar leaves it off. And it's two balls and no strikes to Cesar. I guess I'm trying to get, get, get rid of the beard out of my, out of my vision. Cesar takes low 3 0. Now this trivia question, stump the fan question, is yeah. this like a player that he was a really good player, he's a Hall of Famer. Oh. There's a strike to ah. Cesar. Cesar so far today has struck out and grounded out. Last night he was on base with three hits and a walk. And there's ball. No, it's not ball four. Probably should have been, but it's not. Three and two. PJ Wheelahans presents us our pitch cast. And it was off the plate. And a line drive to left field. That'll drop for a oh, oh, man, man. Did he get lucky. That Woo. would have been three. Easy three for Cesar if that yes, gets past. It would have. But a great start to the inning for the Phils. Yeah, leadoff single. And now Hoskins. Now watch this ball here. Just Cesar just reaches out and slaps it to left. And look at Soto. That ball gets past him. Man, that would have been fun to watch Cesar fly around the bases. He's like, whoo, thank goodness, or someone would have got a little mm -hmm. lecture after that one.
Cesar has stolen 10 bases, been caught twice. I can't see them uh, stealing here. They don't do it as much as they used to, but they also, they also have a catcher that throws the ball pretty well. And you've got Hoskins up. Breaking ball, 0 and 1. Side one ball, one strike. Fetty is not real quick to home, but again, it's comfort level of Cesar. Jumped a little bit. Two balls, one strike. Larry has called a strike in that spot four different times today. Right on the line. That is a strike. Yeah. That will take it. Yes, sir. Fly ball, center field. And Harper backpedals under it, and makes the catch. Cesar draws the throw. And one out. Well, John, nothing can get by you, That's right. as we've learned. So, yes, indeed, that was Adam Morgan. And uh, by the way, just after the day that this photo was taken, six year old Adam told his dad that he was going to play baseball at Alabama when he grew up, just like his father did. And his dad said, Well, it's going to take a lot of hard work, and maybe one day you will. His dad coached him until he was 14. The rest we know. Oh, we know the story. The rest is history. So that is Adam Morgan for a look at Adam and many more babyface major leaguers. Go to our website and our photo gallery, NBCSports.com slash fair play. I thought you were going to say after he was like eight years old, it's when he started growing the beard. <laughs> <laughs> I think that started coming in around age 10. There's Odubel, hits it back toward the middle. Turner's got it, steps on the bag. And a double play. 6 3 on the double play. That is the second double play of the day for Fetty. Middle of the fifth inning. And it's the Phillies two and the Nats two. Bank, the official bank of the Phils. Visit citizensbank.com. Well, yesterday, Lehigh Valley defeated Buffalo 8 3. Nice to see Matt McBride continue to get some hits. Two doubles, two runs scored. Derek Hall hit his 16th home run of the season. That's overall counting Clearwater and the Reading Fightins. Clearwater defeated Dunedin 8 3. And Williamsport defeated Batavia 9 7. Brian Gonzalez, two for three, a double, and two RBIs. 
You might think that's in the ballpark, John. But it is not. It is not? No. It is uh, one of the rooftops here in D.C. in this area, the Anacostia area. Oh, yeah. That's the, that's the building with the trees up top. Right. And from here, it looks like there's a crane coming right out the roof, but it's a Maybe that's how they optical got up illusion. There. As Fetty hits it out towards second, backhanded by Cesar. And one out. Well, I think they're taking the approach that Aaron's not going to walk many mm -hmm. guys, so he might as well swing early. You gotta love that though. Pitcher swings at the first pitch. Quick out. Like, do you think they can see as clear as clearly as we can from I mean, we're about the same height. Yeah, I don't. I think they could see home plate and maybe the infield, but I don't know if they can see all of the outfield. They are fairly close to our height. Now. We got a couple big screen TVs, though. We have the uh, Braves and the Orioles on our big screen TV. Trumbo with a slam, huh? Yeah, Orioles are up four to one. That game's in the top of the fifth. Last, last night, the lead didn't matter for the Orioles in the ninth inning, and they won it in the 15th. As he takes outside, one and one. Persevered, baby. Yep. Manny Machado. Get the fills a half game closer. Manny Machado hit a uh, two run home run. You surprised that they pitched to him? Um, Runner on second. First base open. Yeah, I guess I, I was a little surprised, but then they got a hit 0 2. So I thought, eh. Well, he right was move. probably shocked they were pitching to him. He said, they can't be. So he had to shake it off. And he thought, okay, 0 2, I guess they are. Let me handle this. He's going to get, he's going to make a lot of money. Who's going to pay it? Mm. The big question. I think there are going to be a lot of teams lined up to try to do that. Yeah. Yeah, but well, because there's so many 40 homer. Looks like it's right down the middle. Uh, there's a lot of 40 homer shortstops running around baseball right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that that's going to hurt him. You wonder if there's a you wonder if there's a team that has a shortstop that decides to try to talk him into playing third again. Maybe they can talk the shortstop into playing third. I know talking to Buck, he was in, like he was overjoyed with back being back at shortstop. And so he felt like a kid again. I'm like, well, because he is. He's, He's really a kid. Is. He, what, 24, 25 years old. Yeah, he's uh, whatever deal he signs, it may not be his last one. No, that's what I mean. He could be in the like Mike Trout was telling me. You know, you know, Mike said, you know, look, I'll, I'll still be in what is considered my prime mm -hmm. when I'm a free agent again. Another foul ball. Yeah, Machado's 25. He'll be 26 years old uh, on July 6th. So he signs a six-year deal. He'd be 31 when he's a free agent again. Yes. Yeah, so would you do it that way, or would you sign well, a ten? Well, well, here's the thing: if he whatever he signs, he always has that luxury of moving back to third mm -hmm. or first or first. Check swing outside three and two. It's been a while since uh, Nola's gotten to a three-ball count. He's retired ten consecutive hitters. Breaking ball. Yeah. Line drive foul. Phillies fans, we want to see how you support your team. On your TV or on your device, show us where and how you're watching the game. We want to see your Phillies lawn flags too and your Phillies man cave. Send us your best picks using the hashtag authentic fan. Farrell wants a fastball away. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat coming. Swing and a miss. He got him for the third time today. Well, that's five strikeouts for Nola. Well, 
change up. Just running away from me. Like you said three strikeouts. I think that's the thing you see a guy, you know, and Adam Eaton's a, he's a really good player, but he's a leadoff hitter. You know, it's like Billy Hamilton. You know, what's a book on Billy Hamilton? Off speed pitches. Uh, you know, when these guys are coming up in the minor leagues, they're getting all fastballs because they don't want them to get on base so they can steal. But big league pitchers, if you can utilize your off speed ah. pitches, throw them for strikes, mm. they're going to have trouble. Change up. And they do, and it's one ball and one strike. That was awful nice of Price. Dug out a hole and kicked a little dirt and right behind home plate and cleaned it up for Jorge. <laughs> Jorge says, well, let's see if he can hit this fastball in. Not too far in, two and one. <laughs> Today, four seamers 47% of the time. Change up only 10%. I don't think he's got the total fuel for it as he usually oh. does. Might find out here. Three and one. Wheel of hands. And could have gone either way. Going up against the line. There's another change up. Kind of the general rule is the thought process of a hitter is if he's going to throw a 3 1, he'll probably throw a 3 2. Be able to freeze him in, I think, if he can get that two seamer. That's what they want. Oh, missed. Oh, just missed. Ball four. Two out walk. Well, he almost froze him on that one. I think he would have if he'd have got that one to start right at him and break over that inside, but I think. Kind of took off up and away. Look, it still looked like a decent pitch. Mm -hmm. Well, now Rendon. Has six stolen bases this year. He's been caught once. Ball 0 and 1. And that's what's big. You know, you got a guy that I know he only stole six bases, but Bryce can run. You throw over a couple times, try to keep him close, and then you start off breaking ball first pitch for strike to get ahead. And that could put some doubts into Bryce's head if he wants to try to steal because of the threat of a pitch out. Got a good sized lead off first. There he goes. Pitch is swung on a miss. Throw to second base. That is in time. Wow. Mechanics were solid for Alfaro. 2 4 on the put out. No runs, no hits, and nobody left. Another strong throw from Jorge Alfaro. He had a couple in a row that he had missed, but this one had everything he needed, plus a good tag from Cesar. We'll head to the sixth inning.
Harper have a catch as important as the one that finished off Cole Hamill's no hitter at Wrigley Field in 2015. But no matter what he is doing at the plate, he continues to make plays while patrolling center field for the Phils. He's done it this season again and again, scaling walls and running balls down that most don't. He did it again to complete the series win in Milwaukee. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. We go to the top of the sixth inning. Uh, Odubel Herrera will sit in the dugout and watch Carlos Santana lead things off here in the top of the sixth. Carlos takes the first pitch from Fetty, which is what they wanted. They wanted to get him into the sixth inning and hope that he would get through the sixth inning because they don't really have a whole lot going on in their bullpen today. They were hoping for Fetty to go deep today and tomorrow's rookie starter to go deep as well. Jeffrey Rodriguez is scheduled to start tomorrow. One ball and one strike and Santana fouls it. Yesterday Santana provided us with our giant home run replay. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing that right handed swing and when you can hit them the other way and you know you got it. That's a strong human being and that's our. Giant home run replay yeah, we could have picked we were able to pick and choose. With yesterday with Odubel hitting one two. Look at that 226 total pitches last night most by any Phillies team since 2009. And a majority of them there were 73 that they saw in the last two innings of the game. Yeah with it with a substantial lead and they were still patient. Inside three and two. It tells you that they're right there take a lot of credit right there. That means that they're not giving away a bat. Over to the right side. Waiting back on it is Defoe. And he throws out Santana. And one way here in the sixth. And that brings Nick Williams up. You got to look at John Maley, the Phillies hitting coach. He and Pedro Guerrero. You know, we talked about it when the Phillies were struggling offensively that it wasn't because of a lack of hard work because no. you know both of those guys I and mean, you go into the cage and sometimes the cage is exposed so we can sit and listen a little bit sometimes it's not well here it's exposed so you can hear everything that's going on and what they're trying to do in fact yesterday watching them work with Michael Franco was was kind of neat to see some of the things they were doing with him. One's softly hit to the right side. Defoe again. Well, it's tireless work for those guys, and you know the way you know the way the game is now. It's like these guys. Like I, I've talked to Carlos when he was was struggling a little bit, and I asked him. I said, "Have you ever thought about just taking a day?" Don't hit, mm -hmm. don't go down the cage, no T work, no flips, no nothing. And he goes, Oh no, I couldn't do that. He said, I, I have to have my routine. And so many of these guys coming up through travel ball and through minor leagues and, uh, you know, college and minor leagues, of course, they have routines. They have to, they don't feel right if they don't take X amount of swings and work on certain parts of their, their, their hitting. And, you know, Fortunately, unfortunately, the hitting coach has to be a part of all that. Right. So he has to be down there with all those guys whenever they feel like they need what they need to get prepared for a game. It is tireless. It's thankless. I mean, those guys put in hours that people don't understand. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch to Kingry. Ground ball left side. Turner has it and he jumps again and throws. This time he had more time. But the side is retired. Nothing across. Phillies go down in order. We'll move on to the bottom of the sixth. It's the Phillies two, Nationals two.
Brought to you by your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer or visit DelValHondaDealers.com. And by Jefferson Health. Call 800 Jeff now or visit JeffersonHealth.org. Bottom of the sixth inning, it's the Phillies two and the Nationals two. Eric Fetty, the uh, starter for the, the Nats, he's had two very easy innings. But they are starting to get somebody up in the bullpen as we speak. Like it looks like Ryan Matson is starting to throw. Please are probably wonder where did the offense go. They have seven hits. They've scored two runs, and now Nola will begin the sixth inning against Rendon, who is one for two. But he was up when Harper was thrown out, trying to steal second. And a foul ball, 0 and 1. Matson, he's now stopped his throwing. He's just standing on the mound. Kevin Stocker's uh, pregame interview today was with Ryan Matson discussing the 2008 World Championship and the early part of his Phillies career. Former starter and reliever, closer for the Phils. Also won a world championship with the Kansas City Royals. Number two has popped up over near first base, Carlos Santana in fair territory. And one out here in the sixth. Celebrate July 4th with the Phils when the Orioles come to town for interleague play. That's a 405 first pitch. Salute to veterans presented by Toyota. Arrive early for a special pregame ceremony honoring our nation's vets. Visit Phillies.com to order your tickets. 7-2 Baltimore on top of the Braves. That game is now on the top of the sixth. Doubled. He's also popped out to third base. He went around. Doesn't matter though. It was called a strike. Youngest players in baseball currently are Soto in the National League and Gleyber Torres in the American League, who's 21 for the Yankees. Three and one to Soto. God, what's his when once his name gets back though, he will be right. Ronald Acuna. Uh, he's, he's still 19. Yeah, he's still younger than Acuna. Oh, really? Yeah. There's Murphy. Not bad. Futures no. for those young men. Nationals last year had another outfielder, Victor Robles, who was the youngest player in the league at that time. Ah! On the inside corner, three and two is a good spot. Fans not too happy about it, but. Came back. Mm -hmm. That's what he tried to do with Bryce Harper on the 3 2 pitch and just missed it. Off the plate, foul.
inside ball four. All right, so one out walk. That is the third walk overall. Time now for the Ram Truck Stump Defense Trivia Quiz answer. All right, John, here's the question again. Who is the only player to lead both the National and American Leagues in runs scored in a single season? Well, you know, you have to tie it in somehow. And I was trying to think of Expos players and Phillies players and then you have to think OK who was really good in both leagues and mm -hmm. what is he the only one that's ever won the MVP in both leagues. Uh, yes. Frank Robinson. Frank Robinson is correct. 1956 and 62 at the Reds and, and then 66 with the Orioles. Yeah he, and he managed here. So that kind of ties it all in doesn't it. Yep. Fly ball to center field. I want to talk about somebody who overused his bullpen. <laughs> At times, they were a bad team. He overused his bullpen a lot of times. He's in the ring of honor. Now, I, I, I would think as a manager that would be the most difficult thing. Yes, I would agree. Yeah, particularly if you have no experience, it makes it even tougher if you're learning on the fly in the big leagues. Trey Turner has struck out twice. And he grounds that one foul. Mark Robinson is now 82 years old. Games with the Expos and the Nationals as a skipper. Over a thousand wins as a manager. One ball, one strike. And inside two and one. Today struggled with off speed pitches, breaking balls. So I, three one right here. You got to try it again, huh? Throw the breaking ball, right? Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I would have liked to have seen it when the count was two and one. Something like going fastball away, but let's see. And a throw over. That was the signal that looked like it was away. It was to throw over the first. Broken bat one hopper knocked down by Kingry who throws over to first in time and the inning is over no runs no hits and one man left Nola has not allowed a hit since the second inning of today's game we'll go to the seventh two two.
Phillies in the uh, Nationals tied up at two as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Uh, Nola six innings five strikeouts. Fetty six innings scattered seven hits got out of trouble and struck out three but he'll begin the seventh inning. This is a career high six innings for Eric Fetty. As we go to the seventh inning Mike Calfranco will lead it off. Got to get one here. Franco takes inside one ball and no strikes. It'll be. Interesting to see. Uh, you know what happens here in this inning if Franco hits a double like here. It gets past Harper and Franco will get to second base. That's his third hit of the day. And the last thing you want to do is have to take Aaron out, but 2 2 game, seventh inning. There's a little spinner. That baby didn't have any bite to it whatsoever, but again, he stayed on that. So, Michael Franco, and this is what Matt Galvin and I were talking about yesterday. 28% of the sliders he has seen this year is the highest in Major League Baseball. So teams go after him with the sliders and more and more. And he's able to been, he's been able to stay on a couple of them today. Well that'll be it for Fetty. He'll be lifted with a runner at second base. The kid did a nice job today. And they'll bring in Ryan Matson with nobody out and a runner at second base. So this is a big play by Santana. Yeah, it really is. And that, you know, again, that bare hand play was just incredible because if, look, Aaron was there, but if that hits his hand and bounces away, you're looking at the potential of a huge inning. Mm -hmm. But what it also did it was it took the speed of Defoe off the base pass. Our Hyundai defensive play of the game brought to you by our local Hyundai dealers. That's the line on Fetty. He's responsible for Franco at second with Alfaro up. And nobody out here in the top of the seventh inning. And Alfaro bounces it left side. Franco will get over to third. 6 3 on the put out. Franco with a head first slide into third. And they are going to pull Aaron Nola back. And Jesswell Valentin will come on to face Matson. Well, it certainly wasn't because Aaron couldn't go farther than six innings. Yeah, manageable pitch count. Now he just has to set back and hope that Jess Mel or Cesar can bring in Franco from third base. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a case where Gabe is rolling the dice yeah. that his offense can get him a run. Three walks, five strikeouts for Noah in six innings. And this is where that Ryan Madsen changeup comes into play. Especially against a young hitter. But Murphy and Defoe got to be ready to go because this is where this ball could end up. Oh, 
This is where you, if you're Valentin, you got to just tell yourself, I have to stay on the ball. Outside, one ball, one strike. That was the changeup, which Ryan has thrown since he was the same grip since he was 11 years old. One ball and one strike. There you go. Line drive out toward right field. Eaton's coming on, makes the catch. Franco's tagging, heading home. The throw to the plate is not in time. He got under the tag again. Second time today, and the Phils take the lead three to two. They might take a look at this, but that was a heck of a throw by Adam Eaton right on the money. Tag was high, though. That's the thing. Right now it's a sacrifice fly. The Nationals are taking a peek at it. He tagged him up around his waist. And Eaton got his feet set all the way in the air. Perfect strike. And they're going to review it. Yes, they are. Keeble went out and got foot it. Is. I think he's in. Yeah, I don't know. Did that left foot bounce over I the base? I didn't think it did. Yeah, I didn't think it did, John. I, I thought he was safe. Listen, it's the seventh inning. If yeah. you're Dave Martinez, I think you got to take yeah, a look without, at it. Well, yeah, without question, it's a good move to to check. But I, I think he got in under the tag. Yeah, his foot's on the base. I think the fans agree too, because normally when they show the replay on the board, you know they'll all clap and cheer, and they're yeah. they're kind of and the players are going back to their position. Yeah. Watch it right there. See, his foot is yeah, he hasn't, hasn't touched yet. him yet. He touches him around his belt, and his foot is on the plate there. Again, no, we, we didn't think they could overturn the one at Very first base true. with Murphy. And I think Dave Martinez is looking at it like, oh boy. How about Miguel? You know, get it, give sliding lessons next spring training. <laughs> well, the uh, folks up in New York taking a long look at it. Larry Vanover to the left made the call. Let's take another peek. I think he's on the plate and then he's tagged. Like right there, he's on the plate. I think he got it right, but again, they'll slow it down and blow it up, and they may have something that you know that we don't have back with their technology as far as blowing it up and going frame by frame. Right now, the Phils are on top, three to two, and it would be a sacrifice fly for Jesswell Valentin. It's taken this long actually. Aaron Nola, who you see at the bottom of that bottom right of your screen, he wants it because that would put him uh, on the winning side here. And here we go. Safe. All right. There we go. RBI for Valentin on the sack fly. Second run scored for Michael. Yeah, I thought his foot was in there ahead of the tag, even. Slow down, real speed, all that. We'll take it. Cesar takes low, 1 0. Well, the Phillies, no matter what, need nine outs from their bullpen. And Sir Anthony is rested. 2 0. Tommy Hunter looks like he'll be the first one out. Three and oh. So that is the 50th walk of the year for Cesar Hernandez. I 
like to see him steal. Bright and early right here. Because mm -hmm. Matson's long. Two outs. If it doesn't work out, then you know Reese leads off the the eighth inning. But and at the oh. knees, 0 at one. Matson still throwing 97. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, after a couple of arm surgeries. Pitch is taken inside, throw to second base on one hop, and Cesar is safe at second base. That'll be his 11th steal of the year. Well, Mike Kells had himself a nice day in discussing it with Luis Garcia. Well, there you go. Well, what was it? It was a strike, and now it's 0 and 2, but anything can happen. Base hit at air. Give it an insurance run. So we get a miss. There's the changeup. And re strikes out to wrap up the seventh inning. A run does score in the sack fly by Valentin. Time to stretch. Noah's out. The bullpen is in. Ninth when the Phillies take on these Nationals, and then the next day, and a reminder about the next day, it's a 6:05 first pitch. Go to Phillies.com to get your tickets. The best fireworks show in this city. All right, so now bottom of the seventh inning, Phillies up 3-2. A crowd of 40,000 plus, and they will watch Tommy Hunter take over. 2-0 oh with an ERA of 4.79. Tommy's strikeouts are up. His walk total is down, but a lot of hits for Tommy this year. And a 292 batting average against. I'll be interested to see if they do one inning for Hunter. And if they, I don't think they're going to try to squeeze two out of Sir Anthony, but it might be an inning plus out of Sir Anthony. Well, I think it depends on how this goes. Yeah. You know, Tommy goes through. You know, one, two, three here, quick, and well, that's pretty, pretty quick. quick. Yeah, <laughs> three unassisted. I thought he hit it off his foot the too. way he fell down. Like, I wait, did too. I, you know, people don't understand how high up we are. We can't really see, like you know, in most ballparks, you could hear if a ball hits a guy's yeah. foot, but you can't hear it up here. Yeah, I really did too. I thought it hit his foot. Here we are. 
You get used to the vantage point. Yeah, you do. Oh yeah, no. Must be. Key boom. Takes on the outside corner. Brian Goodwin is out in the on deck circle to pinch hit. Kelvin Herrera is in the bullpen for the Nats. There he is, just acquired from the Royals. Line drive, base hit by Keyboom. Dave Martinez has to make a decision. Do you run for him? Nothing moving from the dugout. Every time a Phillies pitcher records a pitch of 95 or more, Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest internet in Philadelphia. Ball and it's 0 and 1. Outside, one ball and one strike. That's a thing with the one of the way the games have changed is that because of limited bench, it's you know tough to pinch run for your catcher. Yeah. Yeah, more and more teams are going with a four man bench. We were talking about it on the round table last night. I thought it was only going to be for a few weeks that the Phillies would do it, but it's worked out that they haven't had to have an extra yeah. guy on the bench. They'd rather have the extra arm in the bullpen. It got hairy that night when uh, JP got hit, and yeah. broke his hand, and Nick got broken nose. Broken nose. I guess the advantage that the Phillies have is that we do have a third catcher, Santana, who came up as as a catcher with the Indians. Mm -hmm. Well, they have Valentin, who they also deem as an emergency catcher if need be. Two and two to Goodwin. I think you'll see Key Boom running. Three, two, one out. Popped him up. That's a good pitch. It was a fastball, and Cesar waits for it, makes the catch. Two outs. And that brings Adam Eaton up. Adam Morgan, Sir Anthony Dominguez. Tommy Hunter, and that cutter. It was a more of a two seamer yeah. that just ran. Center of the plate. He just good one got out in front of it and hit it off the end of the bat. Thank goodness. Big cranny signaling to the bullpen. Zach Curtis isn't there to answer the phone, I guess. Yeah, no, he missed his calling there last <laughs> night. He was right on it. There's the universal sign of are you ready the tip of the cap. Morgan's ready for Harper. Out 
inside one ball one strike. Broke his bat shattered it. He's slow to get out of the box. And the inning is over. No runs, one hit, and one man left. Nice hitting by Tommy Hunter to get through this seventh. We'll go to the eighth inning. The Phillies on top, three to two. Nissan. Shop choose Nissan.com and buy Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Some changes for the uh, Nationals as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Bryce Harper moves from center field to right field as Brian Goodwin stays in in center field. And Kelvin Herrera is the new pitcher. Herrera in his third game with the Nats. Just acquired from the Kansas City Royals. It's an excellent pickup by the Washington Nationals. He's not closing per se. Doolittle is still the closer, but they will use him to close games because they don't feel like Doolittle can go three straight days to close games. So they feel like they have Herrera and even Matson that they could put in there in that spot. Herrera is a is a big time closer. First of what may be many pieces to move from the Royals. And the first pitch to Odubel Herrera is inside and off the glove of Kiboom. Calvin is now 28 years old. He made his major league debut when he was 21. The Royals this year, he had an ERA of 1.05 and 14 saves. Fastball. I have to say, I think Sean Doolittle is excellent. I think he's a wonderful person. But I would put this guy into the closer role. <laughs> I know you don't want to disrupt the chemistry and the flow and everything. They do say that he'll he'll get a, his fair share of save opportunities. Was he closing for Kansas City this 14 year? 14 saves. Yep. Because I know in the past it was always Wade Davis or someone else. Yeah, it was him. Four hundred and forty two games for the Royals. He was a workhorse. And they'll do the strikes out. Coming out here in the eighth inning. And that brings Santana to the plate. Time for the Major League Notebook. Here's Greg Murphy. Murph. All right. Thank you, Tom. Brought to you by the University of Maryland, University College. And despite being in fourth place currently in the AL West, the Oakland A's are playing some pretty good baseball. They have 40 wins so far, and they are slugging on the road. Steven Piscotti uh, hit a two run home run today for the A's versus uh, Chicago. And with it, they, say they tied an American League record. They have now hit a home run in 24 straight 
road games. Mm. How about that? It's the best since 1996. The Orioles did 24 as well back in 96. The A's have 66 home runs in 37 road games this year. And Anthony DiSclefini of the Reds, well, he put his name into the record books today. He's a right-handed pitcher, but he's in the record books now as a hitter because, because in the third inning today, he stepped up and hit a grand slam for the Reds. It is the first pitcher to hit a grand slam for the Cincinnati Reds since 1959. So he was able to do that today, doing a little helping his cause a little bit, a little bit of offense from DiSclefini. Hmm. And that is your Major League Notebook, brought to you by the University of Maryland, University College, guys. There was Bob Perky. You remember Bob Perky, John? Yeah, the old perks or sinker slider. August 1st of 1959 against the Cubs. That's a pretty good thrill. One ball, one strike to Santana. And he hits that one out toward left field. It's hit pretty well. Soto's going back to the fence, and it is gone into the bullpen. Carlos Santana's given the Phils an insurance run. It's four to two here in the top of the eighth inning. About that, huh? Two for 17 now against Kelvin Herrera, and both home runs. That is incredible. What a swing, though. You've got to love this. Home run right handed to right field yesterday. Now left handed hits a home run to left field. That means he's staying on the ball. He's seeing it long. High fastball, too, that gives a lot of left handed hitters trouble, but not our man Carlos. I tell you, what, his reaction was if he had missed it. Yeah. When he initially hit it, he didn't miss it. Nope. And we'll take the insurance. And here is Nick Williams, who is one for three. That home run for Carlos is 13th. He has 26. With 13 home runs so far this year, he has 46 RBIs. Two and up. Fouled off two and one. Yeah, Adam Morgan still throwing, so I'm assuming he's coming in this game in the bottom of the eighth. Bouncer back toward the middle and waiting for it is Turner. He hobbled for a moment. And is able to throw out Nick Williams. Jose David Flores just shrugged his shoulders as to whether they want to look at it or not. Nick ain't moving. Rob Thompson there on the on the horn. Might as well, huh? Nope. But the hesitation, they might have a chance. And just got him. Yes, they did. We got to really be patient when we're scoring these games, don't we? Because <laughs> we we both do ours in pen. Yeah, I've had to white out a couple things. Yeah, Schmitty does his in pencil. Yeah, Wheels used to do his in pencil. Foul ball by Kingry. Understand why anyone would want to do it? Be a catcher? Yeah. Well, if you're good at it, it gives you long-term career stability. Breaking ball. Pretty good pitch. Two and one.
is Adam Morgan in the bullpen. Get to one here, you know, fastballs come. They found it back to the screen. That home run by Santana, the Phillies have two extra base hits in this ball game, actually three. And that gives him 35 extra base hits since the 14th of June. Should have four. Because of the the Franco. Right. This <laughs> ball four to King Still not gonna I, I, that don't, that'll never end with me. All right, well let me ask you something. Let's say he hits a stand up double and he rounds second, they throw in behind him. Is it a double? It's a double. Well then what's the difference in what he just did? He just slid and slid, touched the base, so he's safe. He yeah. goes past the base, they tag him, he's out. I think this one, it, it just to, I'm, I'm not saying that you're wrong with it, but this one is a, what they would call a continuous play. Well, rounded in second, oh. rounded, going to second, you know, going into second, you round it and you get back, and that's not a continuous play? Right, what I'm saying though is that that play is, I'm not probably not going to explain it to your liking, <laughs> so bear with me here. And then, then might as well not say a word. <laughs> I got to talk to Manfred. This is all there is to it. Because they threw to second to then to get Franco. He beat it, but because he slid off the bag, it was a continuous play. You're what? right. <laughs> I didn't think you. I didn't think that would be to your uh, to your liking. He slides in safely. John, I'd like you to expand on this so I can record this for the Cruckcast coming up next week. Yeah. I think we've got a podcast part two. Coming. I think that's one of those Murph where you just ask the question and you just step out of the way. That's exactly right. That's right. That's <laughs> what makes me a good executive producer. Murph I can't explain it because it's the dumbest dang thing I've ever heard. John I, I agree with you 100 percent. It Nine. makes no sense whatsoever. I agree. Not 99 percent. Nope 100. 100 all 100. Nationals thought about reviewing that one. Now an RBI situation for Franco, who is three for three with two runs scored. Back toward the middle and under the glove of Defoe in the center field. Kingry's heading home. Goodwin has no play. It's five. Two Phillies on top. Well, that should be an RBI single for Michael Franco. That is his 37th RBI. It's his fourth hit. And the Phillies now lead it by three. I think he's taken to what they 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 were working with him on. Right through the middle. Right through the middle. Hey, listen. It's one game, but you hope it does carry over because this guy's got obviously some power. Defoe not happy with himself. Gabe was no. saying Gabe was saying yesterday, and, and then you can say this for a lot of a lot of positions, but for a third baseman you have to have three things. You have to be a consistent hitter, and not necessarily in this world. Consistent hitter. You've got to be able to defend. You've got to be a plus defender at third base. You just have to be. As Alfaro swings through the first pitch, and you have to be able to slug, which means hit home runs, extra base hits, drive in runs. He said Franco has that. It's not where they'd like it to be. But he has that. And he said now all this that he that I'm saying he said I believe that there's a player in there. And I believe that Michael Franco is still a young player and there is there is something in there and we're trying to get it out of him. Because that ball was foul. He said but he'd like to see him pick up those other two parts. Of it. Yeah. Be a better defender, which means he's got to get himself in probably a little better shape to be quicker around the third base bat and to be more consistent. And he said defensively, it's probably consistency too. And again, one game does not make a, a complete turnaround, but this is nice to see. 
four for four two runs scored in RBI. Aggressive base running. The little things of the game the sliding. We I mean how many times we've we seen. Throughout the years guys just struggle with sliding. I mean, didn't it call who are we playing this year cost them a run. Oh it was that. Uh, and Siarte. Mm -hmm. A swing and a miss. Bronco is left over at first, but his RBI single, coupled with Santana's home run, has given the Phils a three run lead. Boy, this is a beauty of a swing the opposite way for Carlos Santana. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Phillies on top five to two over the Nationals as they go back into their bullpen. military children by donating school supplies at Citizens Bank Park. We invite you to do so on July 4th when the Phillies take on the Baltimore Orioles. School supplies will be collected at all gates through the fourth inning. We'll support the Liberty USO's rucksacks to backpacks program which helps military families prepare for the school year. Go to phillies.com slash community for more information. Bottom of the eighth inning, Phillies on top 5 2, and Adam Morgan will come out of the bullpen to face that guy right there. Bryce Harper is 0 for 2. So I'm getting a lot of answers to why someone would want to be a catcher. One was from our, our buddy Ben Davis. He said, Because we're dumb and we can't hit. <laughs> and then, of course, Larry Anderson and his wit and wisdom. Why doesn't Franco have two doubles today? To work, stir the pot with me a little. Mm -hmm. Larry's looking out for Mike Hell. And he's looking yeah. to help you with your podcast. Yeah. No balls in one strike to Harper. And Harper fouls it, and it's 0 2. <laughs> See now this situation you would have thought before he got two strikes of course. Maybe he would try to bunt. There ain't a cloud hardly a cloud in the sky. And it must rain. be behind us because it looks very nice out and it's raining. Sun shower. Upstairs one and two. See it looks beautiful there you'd look there and say. Boy, it's a nice day. You look there and you say, Boy, it's a rainy day. A poor reef. He's the only one in the rain. <laughs> Down low, two and two. Maybe somebody left a faucet out or something. <laughs> and 
maybe it's just runoff from the trees. Hey, who do you think goes up there and waters those trees up on that building? I think they got somebody working with them. A heck of a long, long walk to carry some buckets up there, <laughs> wouldn't it? It's sharply into the shift. Waiting for it is Cesar. One out here in the eighth inning. Tina Urban from our front office. Uh, her son is up there, and they sent a photo, and it, it looks beautiful. Cool, and the view is good. It's what we thought, though. It, you can see the infield, but not much of the outfield. Anthony Rendon is one for three. I think it stopped raining in left field. Rendon hits a foul up the third base line. Oh, and one. Let the scoreboard watching begin, huh? And Baltimore still leads 7 2 in the bottom of the seventh inning over the Braves. What old Bucky has left in his bullpen, though. Of course, what do the Braves have left, too? Sharply foul, and it's 0 2. Nice play. The rain stopped. Yeah, I think it's, it's still raining in the upper deck. In left field, but it's not rating in left field. Outside. Some Brewers fans in town, Johnny. Well, the boxers taking control of the situation out there. Boxers are lap dogs, just so you know. They may not seem to be, but they, they like to be in people's laps. Somebody is tantalized. That dog is eyeballing that <laughs> whatever that's nachos. I think it was nachos or cheese fries or something. Gave him a dog biscuit instead. He's like, really? I don't want to keep that dog away from that beer. That could get ugly, huh? Three and two to Rendon. It's another one foul. Murph, look out. Did you catch it? I don't think he caught it. I think he caught him. Is he all right? He's okay. Gave it to a youngster. I'm okay. Just hit the leg. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you going on the DL? Nope. I'm gonna power through. Walk, walk it off. Let's see you walk it off. <laughs> that one's down the left field line foul. Hey Murph, between innings, you should jog out to the left field fence and back just yeah. to make keep the keep it keep it loose. Keep, yeah, keep I, it loose. Keep I the actually blood think flowing. That's a in good there. idea. Okay, I will. And we won't put a camera on you. <laughs> Dong's right there. Maybe he can help you out. Did that really get you, Mark? Yeah, it hit me in the leg. Oh man. Solid or no? Not is really it bruised? Solid. Is it? Are yeah, you get bruising? I don't know yet, Tom. I mean, will you have to see Scott Sheridan in there in the trainer's room? Maybe get a little ice. I think I'm going to be okay. I don't fouls it down the right field line. It remains three and two. <laughs> I'm 
going to text Scott right now and tell him to go over and look at you. <laughs> I think he has better things to do than worry about me. Nah, he's just sitting in the dugout. I can see him right down here. Tenth pitch of the at bat to Rendon. It's three balls and two strikes. Another one fouled off. That one almost hit Neal. Get off the netting. Center field that's pretty well hit. Oduba's going back and it is gone. Solo home run for Rendon. It's a 5 3 ball game. It's his eighth home run of the year. You think with all those foul balls and all pitches he's seen, and you know, Adam made some pretty good pitches there. Rendon kept fouling them off. And as good a hitter as Rendon is, it was a good chance he was going to win that battle. Should we tell him? There you see it. It's, a, it's like a two seamer. He's actually, not a bad pitch. It was down. Sometimes you have to tip your hat to the hitter. He beat him that time. Now Soto, who is one for two. And he out, he's out in front of the first pitch, the slider. It's 0 and 1. You can tell him if you want to. All right. Hey, Murph, just got a text from my, our, our old buddy, Bull. Yeah. And <laughs> I know where this is going. He said <laughs> he couldn't catch in high school. <laughs> no, if I thought Bull remembered high school, then I'd believe that. <laughs> His high school or mine, for that matter. <laughs> oh, and 2 uh, to Soto. I can't wait. I can't wait for you to see him in the, when we play the Yankees. Oh, I can't wait to see him either. I bet he's gonna have something to say. Soto hits it out to shortstop at a couple of hops, and Kingry throws him out. Six three of the put out, two away. Kingry was set up perfectly for that ground ball. And now Daniel Murphy, who is one for three with two runs batted in. Anthony looking over the scouting report. He might come in for Turner. Jim Gott, bullpen coach, chatting with him. Inside, 2 and 0. Oh. You don't think uh, Adams would take Adam care of that? Adams is going to come back and get Murphy here. The slider, see if he can get a grounder to Cesar. Ground ball right side. Big easy hop for Cesar and the inning is over. One run on the home run by Rendon. And that's it for the Nats. We'll go to the ninth inning. The Phillies five and the Nationals three.
It's also community energy solar powered Liberty Bell. It's free to kids 14 and under. There's a shot of the Liberty Bell right there. If you remember the, the solar operated fanatic from uh, either last year or the year before, it's a similar concept. Go to Phillies.com to order your tickets. Top of the ninth inning, and Aaron Altair will lead it off for the Phillies against Sean Kelly. First pitch breaking ball 0 and 1. Good two. Lays off. They appeal. No swings is David Rackley. I think Franco and Altair are the two pupils right now for John Maley and Pedro Guerrero. Even that pitch right there, I mean, you know better than I do, John, yeah. but it's a hanger, and Aaron would usually hit yeah. that out to the Metro. Yeah, it just, like, sometimes I think with Aaron, he just, it, he doesn't get his front foot down in time. Correct. And it seems like a lot of times when he tries to catch up, he really. Jabs it down on the ground hard, and when you do that, you know, your head bounces a little. Oh, swing and a miss. Fooled on that pitch, and that's the first down here in the ninth inning. So one away, back to the top of the order for Cesar Hernandez. Cesar is one for three with a walk. 50 walks for Cesar Hernandez. Only the one he had earlier today. So these are with 50 walks this year. Just to put it in perspective, last year in 128 games, and this is the 74th game, in 128 games, he walked 61 times. Now his batting average is a little higher last year than it is this year. As Turner just barely throws him out. Six three on the put out, two outs. Cesar is saying we should take a look at that. He thought, I think he thought he was safe. Rob Thompson on the phone and he said, nope, he's out. And now Reese Hoskins. Really got a Keep your head up in this game when you're keeping score. <laughs> that's, yes, stress, that's stress in my life. I didn't need Tom. Got to focus, Johnny. Particularly at this <laughs> at this height, you have to keep an eye on it. Strikes. There's a high pop up just behind the mounds or to the left of it, and it's Rendon who will put it away. So, an easy ninth inning for Sean Kelly. Sir Anthony Dominguez warming up in the bullpen for the Phils. The ninth inning is his.
Metallica are standing by to talk about the NOLA outing, but also the hustle from Michael Franco. The fact that he's 4 4 today as well. All that coming up on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Sir Anthony Dominguez is on to pitch the ninth inning, trying to pick up his fourth save. 29 strikeouts for Sir Anthony in 22 and a third innings. He's trying to win here and then they'll watch and wait and see what happens with Baltimore and Atlanta. And maybe going into tomorrow's action a game and a half back in the East. But three outs to get. Turner Defoe he's on deck. And then Keyboom the catcher is scheduled to hit. We've got Taylor Reynolds and Severino available on the bench. Let's hope we don't get there. There's Michael Taylor waiting. Is that 98 with a cut. Heel, no swing, two and one. All right, so they go back to the slider. Sometimes they think with a right hander, unless you get two strikes, I would just keep going fastball that cuts. Three and one. I'm liking that. After he threw that pitch, he's shrugging his shoulder. It's still not the eight, though. Yeah. <laughs> Swing and a miss. He got a 98. He just said, "Here you go." Yeah, it's you know, you, 98 is hard enough to hit when it's straight, but when it's cutting and running and everything else, man, it's near impossible. Here is Defoe. I mean, look at the spin. I mean, that slider spin at 98. Now that one didn't cut as much as some of them do, but it don't have to cut much to to, to, to trick you. Mm -hmm. Shaking his head. I, I think he's, I'm hoping he's shaking his head just to himself. Or he's shaking his head like, okay, this ain't right. 98 cut. That's outside. 98 run. And 98 off the glove of Alfaro. It's just got to be so difficult to catch it. You're putting down. I mean, that said right there was a fastball away, and he threw it, and it started away, and then cut. A little high, three and one. So for the first two hitters, he's fallen behind three and one. Got the first one on a strikeout. Looks like Taylor's going to bat for Keyboom. Ground ball, shortstop, Kingry. He's got it. Nice play. Two outs. Just saw Jared Eikhoff on the bench in the Phillies dugout. He threw a bullpen session today. Ten curveballs and into the 30s with a session. And he was ecstatic after it was over with. Next step is another bullpen before they figure out what they're going to do. Good thing is no tingling in his finger. Yeah, well, it's going to be an interesting decision if he. When he does come off the disabled list, what do you do? Mm -hmm. the five starters have been pretty good. Yes, sir. All right, so here's Taylor with two outs in the ninth inning. And it's one to no. So he's trying to win back to back games and win their fourth consecutive series. It is just free and easy. 
about when he got behind Defoe and he threw a 99 mile <laughs> cutter fastball whatever. Outside two and one. No sliders though since that. Well. I don't think he needs it. I think it's unnecessary at this point. Uh, Sunday Night Baseball a night game nationally televised. We'll be back on the air Monday at 7 against the Yankees. A lot of Phillies fans have made their way down to D.C. Two balls and two strikes. It's like the old days. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him. 97 miles an hour. And it's a 1 2 3 ninth inning. Uh, the Phillies take game two, 5 3. They've taken the first two games of this series. Michael Franco was one of the offensive stars today. First series win for the Phils in D.C. since 2016. And it's the fourth consecutive series win overall. And depending on what's going to happen with the Braves and the Orioles, the Phillies could start play tomorrow a game and a half out in the National League East. Our Chevrolet player of the game, Michael Franco. And you want to talk about people working hard to try to get themselves back. That's what Mike Hell did. Our deliveries of the game brought to you by W. Mason. We start in the second inning. Well, Aaron Nola, you know, that power hitting pitcher. <laughs> second hit of the season, a base hit to drive in Franco with a great slide. And then in the seventh inning, 